Hey guys, welcome to Metabolism. Now, how many people just shivered when I said the word metabolism? I appreciate that metabolism is one of those subjects that students frequently freak out about before they have an opportunity to actually see the value of it. So I want you to know on the front end, we're going to look at the key end products. We're going to put them into the tables. We're going to take our time and we're going to discuss the relevance of each one of these sets of reactions without delving too deeply into the enzymatic activities that occur. And we're going to start off though this time around with an overview. What is metabolism? Metabolism is all the biochemical reactions that occur at the cell level in which we are taking foodstuffs that we ingest in our diet and converting them either to larger structures or use them to generate the energy that drives our body. There's actually two sets of reactions then in metabolism. Those sets of reactions in which we use the foodstuffs to generate larger structures by chemically linking them together. That set of reactions is known as anabolism, or we also know as the anabolic reactions. These are the easy ones to remember because we frequently hear of athletes misusing hormones and those hormones are called anabolic steroids. And the reason why they're doing it is to typically to build muscle mass. The other set of reactions is called the catabolic or reactions or catabolism. Catabolism is going to be the set of reactions in which we take the same foodstuffs and break them down. And in the process of breaking them down, breaking those covalent bonds that hold those organic molecules together and garnering the energy that is stored in those covalent bonds and transferring it to the phosphate bonds associated with building ATP molecules. Catabolism occurs at the cell level and the set of reactions that are the catabolic reactions at cell level are known as cellular respiration. Now cellular respiration is going to be the catabolism of foodstuffs, the breakdown of those foodstuffs, and to transfer the potential energy stored in those foodstuffs into molecules of ATP. Now I will tell you on the front end, this is only about 38% efficient in taking the energy that's stored in, that, in glucose molecules and converting it to usable energy in our body in the form of ATP. Where's the rest of it go? Hope you remember from chemistry that it goes out as heat energy. Heat is very important to us, if you recall because it ensures that we're warm-blooded organisms and our enzymes can function efficiently regardless of the external environment we place ourselves in, whether it's cold outside. Now there happens to be three stages associated with metabolism. The first stage, it is going to be the digestion, the absorption, and the transportation of the foodstuffs to the tissue level. Now digestion means the breakdown of the foodstuffs that we ingest because the reality is we cannot absorb proteins across the digestive lining, but we can absorb the amino acids that are used to build those proteins. So digestion is going to be the mechanical and the chemical breakdown of the larger molecules, the macromolecules, into their monomers so that we can absorb them across the digestive lining. Absorption is to bring them into the blood. We cannot absorb proteins, but as you see from this diagram, we can absorb amino acids. We can absorb glycogen, but we can absorb glucose. We can absorb a good number of the fats, so we typically will break them down to glycerol and their fatty acids as well. Now, transportation is via the blood. Sometimes they're carried, sometimes they float freely. But their target is going to be the tissue, and specifically, it's going to be the cell. Once at the cell, the second phase begins. And that second phase is going to be cellular processing. Cellular processing occurs at the cytoplasmic level. And it's going to be, do we need those foodstuffs to build larger structures? The synthesis of uh, proteins that we could use at the cell level or the synthesis of cellular materials? Or do we need them to generate the energy that we need? And that would be the catabolic reactions. If we do the catabolic reactions, as you can see from the diagram here, the end products would be things such as pyruvic acid and acetylcholenzyme A. Now this occurs in the cytoplasm, but to maximize the potential energy that I can get from breaking down the foodstuffs, I would want to, if possible, 
carry those pyruvates and those acetylcholines I made into the mitochondria. Now the mitochondria is where we're going to see things such as the Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation occur. But a key switch there is this. The only way we can physically carry those foodstuffs into the Krebs cycle and finish the breakdown process is in the presence of oxygen. So the third phase of metabolism is something known as oxidative breakdown. Oxidative breakdown says in the presence of oxygen, we can maximize the amount of ATP that we get from the raw materials to foodstuffs by carrying the foodstuffs after processed in the cytoplasm into the mitochondria where they can be further broken down and the end products of oxidative breakdown is going to be carbon dioxide and the maximum amount of ATP that we can generate. And say the respiration. So the respiration is an overview. The goal of so the respiration is to trap this chemical energy in ATP molecules. And we can do that trapping process by using materials that we already have stored in our body, such as fats and glycogen. Or we can do it by utilizing the foodstuffs that we take in in our diet. The set of reactions though, that are associated with cellular respiration is that we're going to look at here in subsequent videos will be glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation. Glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm. Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation occur in the mitochondria of the cell. The ultimate goal of cellular respiration is to produce ATPs. ATP synthesis can occur one of two ways. It can occur as substrate phosphorylation, which is simply a transfer of a phosphate group from a substrate molecule of foodstuff to the end of an ATP molecule, or oxidative phosphorylation, which is a much more complex process that we'll take a look at a little bit later on. Substrate phosphorylation will occur in the cytoplasm, and it'll also occur a little bit in the Krebs cycle. Oxidative phosphorylation occurs exclusively in the mitochondria. Now, reflect on what is metabolism. What's the difference between anabolic and catabolic reactions? What are the three stages associated with metabolism? What is the difference between each of those three stages? What is cellular respiration? And briefly, what are the ways in which we can synthesize ATP molecules? Hey guys, take a deep breath and have a great day. See you later.